morning guys. So here we are back on the boat. We're just uh, pumping out the holds real quick. We're gonna go over to the cannery and get some ice and uh, just prepare for our next halibut trip. So not much to do, just uh, some yeah, ice melt off. Up. Yeah, I get it freshened up, get the stale water out from the ice. So we'll do that real quick and then uh, we'll head over to the cannery. Yeah, it's been a real nice spring so far, kind of relaxing. Been a lot of work at home. Got a nice garden expansion going, you'll see that at some point. drop down to us. Uh, we'll go ahead and start icing up here as soon as they start up the machine. Seems so like we'll it takes about five minutes to get the ice here. The machine's over there. So yeah, over yonder where it says ice to Travel through a bunch of augers and across there and up here and down here and yeah, you got a long ways to go. It can be a little time consuming sometimes. All right, we're just waiting for the ice. I decided to take the tarp off the reel. We just put it over there during the winter to keep it from getting uh, exposed to the sun there and found yeah. out we had a little, uh, a little love knot here. Yeah, so this would have been a bad spot in the, the line and we just uh, retie it when we're fishing. It's a love knot, also known as water, lot, uh, water knot. So just a quick way to rejoin the line Anyways, so it was right on top of the, the reel here, so I'm just going to fix it real quick while we're waiting. Usually you want to just kind of check both ways. Sometimes it'll be chafed over a fair amount of, of the line. <clears throat> Might be another bad spot a couple feet away or a fathom away or something, but this one looks pretty good. This one is also be okay. Yeah, it could have been where uh, where the line got caught in a rock and chafed up. Yeah, sometimes it gets hung up on some old gear, old lost crab pods, stuff like that. So this one looks good anyways. There's no sense trying to untie this. It's super tight. It'll never come undone. So I'm just going to cut it. I'm not going to bother taping these right here, but I will burn them. This stuff is always fun to splice. Have to save it to fit too. All right, so I'm just gonna untwist these. Maybe about six inches. I'll just butt them up together. I'll do two tucks and a taper on each side. The taper makes it nice, so it's not just a big water line going from one diameter to double diameter right in the same area of the splice nice taper lets it feed through pulleys and cracks better yep <laughs> so pretty simple let's make these about equal put them together really doesn't matter how you do it so you're just gonna pick any strand once again it doesn't matter go right over the top of the first one I just hold this pretty tight at first on that side because strand I'm tucking it under is actually just the one that I'm holding right there so 
So this is three, three strand line. There's other long line gear like Keylon that's four strand. Majority of it's all three strand though with the exception of that one. So right now, it's one tuck, flip it over, come back from the other side. Right now it's pretty loose and floppy. Do the same thing. Looks kind of messy right now. Get those three. Now tighten it up a little bit. Let's go by one by one. Yeah, it's a bit hard to see in detail like the actual technique for it. So we'll post a a splice guide in the description below. So these are actually really out. simple splices compared to some of the others. Yeah. Just a bit hard to see on camera probably. So. Yeah, because my hand's in the way. Yep. So you can see that that's tightened up a lot now. So that's the first tuck on each side. We'll do a second tuck. Same thing, doesn't matter where you start. Over and under. So that's two tucks right there. Now I'm just going to taper this. That's plenty on this. I'll just taper two of these. It's not going to come loose. So you basically want to go counterclockwise as you're tapering it. So now you can see that these two are in line. Now this one will get two tucks. And we'll put it at the beginning or the end. Very nice. Now I'll flip it over. So this is kind of like the behind the scenes stuff that you got to keep up on. It's always gear work to do. So now you got a nice splice there. I'll just come back and trim these and burn them if you want. It really doesn't matter too much. When you cut these, just give this line a quick little twist like that. Keep it nice and tight. It's and I'll about, just what, hit these lightly inch? with the torch. Yeah, about three quarter. Somewhere in there, huh? Yep. These will just fray over time anyways, but I'll just hit them with the torch for now. Just try to not hit the main line. Just kind of bend it like that. Nice. Good to go. A little fray tutorial for you.
Okay, well, we'll shoot a little more in here and then I guess it's back to our stall and get some bait out later this afternoon. Yep. Let it start thawing out. What do you think, by the time it gets here? Yeah, it's probably good, huh? Yeah. Probably good. Yeah, so close this up. We'll be putting our fish down here. These side ones is just kind of extra ice for the next trip or whatever. We'll throw some tarps over them. Help keep them cool. Yep, top ice. Slow the melt down. All right, guys, so clearing the pipe. Guess that's about it. Yep. Not much to it. Hoist it up. We we'll drop our boom back down and we're ready to go. All right, guys. So we're back down here on the boat. Uh, we're about to start baiting up our hooks for tomorrow's long line sets. So we'll start that. Um, for bait, we are using some Pollock here some squid and some pink salmon from uh, last year's Sane sets. So uh, that's what we're using for bait. Um, usually we'd use some cod, but don't really have any available right now. So uh, yeah, that's out. Anyway, uh, we'll get going on it here and just kind of show you the process. All right, so we'll get chopping on these uh, pollock here and some salmon. This squid's still frozen, so try and break some off of it, but we'll see in a while if we're able to bait any today. So, yep, these make a nice size for bait. Just chunk them like this. Slide them off to the bait table. salmon here cut it right in half chunk it up I like so do that for about 200 more pollock and a handful more salmon and send them on to the bathing station which is right next door mm. right here these hands are ready <laughs> yeah we'll get busy T gotta showcase the baiting Do the baiting myself. The guys might do it differently, but I do it like that, especially on the heads. Stick it on there like that. It's really nice because when we 
first start out, the hooks are all pinned, so it makes it a lot easier for grabbing your hook. Just do it like that. Poke it through. Yeah, the next bait up will be a lot easier because the hooks won't be rusty, so be a little bit smoother. Nice. All right, guys, so there's one tub. It's pretty good. Bait smells fresh still, so hopefully it fishes good. But uh, we'll just keep going here. Um, gonna try and, I guess we'll just use the bait we have, so. And uh, yeah, we'll pick you up once we're setting out tomorrow. So, see you then. Okay, guys, so I got a little present from Noah the other day. National Marine Fisheries. Got a new bird line. So this is our old one. It's kind of worn out. Got a call from them saying uh, we needed to get our setup revamped a little bit and do a little better. So part of the issue was that it was being deployed after the first hook goes overboard and that's not allowed. So I didn't really think about it when we put out the video. But we kind of got ourselves caught, so anyways, they were nice enough to be lenient and gave us a warning and just told us to get a new, get a new bird line, get it rigged up properly. Let's see what we got here. Nice and brand new. Yeah, nice and gray. Got a nice stainless swivel on the end. So we're gonna tie this. Well, we're not gonna actually go off the mast. We're gonna go off the end of our slider right here. And then we'll put a long tag line from like our reel, kind of somewhere back by the glacier bay to where we can grab that tag line and get it pulled in without having to turn on the hydraulics and drop that down every time. So that's my plan. I think that'll work. Might just use this old one as a tagline. We'll see. And then we gotta rig up some kind of float on the end of it too to just uh, create some drag. Okay, so we 
got the hydros on, so just controls the slider right here. And we'll probably drop her boom down a little, so. And we can get at that. Perfect, so I'll just find some line and lash that swivel on there. And then I can lift it back up, get a tag line figured out for it. We'll go from there. So we'll just tie this off with the love knot, um, just the same one that we use on our long line reel if we get a bad shaping spot there and have to tie it off. So a pretty simple knot. You just line up the ends. on this end. So those will cinch up. They won't come untied. It's kind of hard to tell where it's going to even sag at. Well, it's just going to stretch out. Yeah. And I guess if the tag line long I can just tighten it up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I guess mm. I could just put a loop on the Does end. it need a tag line? Or well it does because otherwise So you pull out gear is that what it's for when you pull out gear or Yeah so I can just pull it in. I mean it'll drop down. Yeah Maybe it'll it's drop fine. down. But we could just try it but like you say if, if you just put a loop on it then slide too. Hmm. Seems so long already. <laughs> where's all the where's all the danglers, huh? Oh, they're getting longer on this side. The other side is the tail end. Yeah, I think I have it backwards, huh? Yep. I was kind of wondering why they were so short. Free. Okay, well, looks like we got this thing on backwards, so. The longer tails are supposed to be towards the boat, so they hang down and bounce off the water and flop around and scare the birds away. So the reason for this is to prevent seabirds from getting hooked because they'll go after a bait. And if three short-tailed albatross get hooked in a year, it can shut down the entire uh, fishery for the rest of the year. So that's a good thing. Okay, so let's get this swapped around. Up. Okay, well, we'll probably store this up on the reel, but I gotta get another cup from home, so for tonight, I'm just gonna pile it right here on the deck. Just kinda scale it up, I guess. Yeah, pretty good now. Yeah, I wonder if we should just grab a, one of our old flat buoys too from home. Maybe one of those that's kind of weird. Flat buoys? Yeah, one of our little ones. Yeah, we can. Because that'll put a lot more drag on it. 
a <laughs> big pile. Fine. Okay, well, I guess that's it. Yeah, we'll toss this in the tub when we bring it in tomorrow. So we need to attach a buoy on the end still to give it some drag and that'll help keep it tight. We've got a couple of the old A1 at home, we'll grab one of those. That'll give it more drag than this Dungeon S3. So. Yep. Cool. Yeah.